astrology. Some of you love it, some of you can't stand it, but regardless what you think on the topic, I think it's safe to say that ever since like five, six years ago, the girlies cannot get enough of astrology. I think the fad may have pretty much come and gone by now because it's been a moment since I've seen a The Signs as X post on Tumblr. However, I think it remains to be something that people are much more passionate about than they were before its boom in popularity. Now, I think it's pretty much a universal human experience to be reading your horoscope and think to yourself, damn, I wish I could be envisioning these zodiac signs as a group of 12 spunky crime-fighting teen girls with a passion for fashion. Like, it's only natural. Well, I've got some great news, because that absolutely exists. Now, I'm honestly not sure how the general YouTube public is going to receive this topic. I truly have no idea how widespread the phenomenon of this website was. Very few people I've spoken to have heard about it, and yet apparently it was one of the most popular sites for girls available during its heyday. Today, I'd like to cover the obscure lost flash mascots and dolls, the Zodiac Girls. I learned about the Zodiac Girls when my friend told me about it around 2007. I have no idea how they had heard of it, but they were into it for the astrology aspect. Me, though, I've never been much for astrology, but what I am a big fan of is flash mascots. And there are 12, no, 13 here, and all in a pleasingly purple package. Unfortunately, despite the site's promises of more adventures to come, I discovered the site in its twilight years. What I saw was all that there was ever going to be. This has made Zodiac Girls kind of a sticking point in my mind for all these years, because I have to wonder, why did the franchise turn out the way it did? Why did it only get to be a fairly popular website and then an obscure doll line and then just fizzled out into nothingness? That's what I'm setting out to answer today. Before we take a look at the website, let's take a look at who's behind these characters. Rosina Rothman and Jill Akahoshi of Los Angeles-based Three Muses are credited as the driving forces behind these characters. There's a bit more information about them on the studio's website, which is linked to at the footer of ZodiacGirls.com. Rosina Rothman's background prior to the Zodiac Girls was primarily in magazine publishing, and according to her updated resume page, she's mostly pivoted to kids' media ever since finding success in Zodiac Girls. Jill Akahoshi's background is stated to be in television marketing, but I haven't been able to find an updated professional website to see what she's been up to since. Some other notable credits include David Elsonson as Flash Animator and Web Designer, Lori Friedman as Concept Artist, Dennis Martin as Programmer and Webmaster, Atomic Cartoons for help with Flash content, and Nancy Berman as Horoscope Writer. In my research for this video, I found that another channel, Dabbling in Variety, also covered this topic. In the comments of this video, I found something very interesting. A commenter claiming to be the artist of the Zodiac Girls, saying that the design sprung up from drawings of the other contributors that the commenter made as Christmas gifts. As the comment states, Scorpio is Rosina, Virgo is Jill, Leo is Bianca, and I'm Libra. The specific identities of Bianca and the commenter are uncertain, but Rosina and Jill match up to the names of the credited directors from Three Muses. I was originally concerned that this may just be another instance of extremely specific and inexplicable misinformation, but as my research progressed, I found some evidence of this claim. First, you'll notice that the characters Scorpio, Leo, Virgo, and Libra are frequently grouped together in the artwork, most notably on the welcome page. In the Zodiac Girls crossword game, the one question that stumped me was about these characters. According to this game, they make up the core four of the Zodiac Girls. Considering an in-story explanation for this is completely missing, I think it's safe to say that the story of these four characters being based on real people is accurate. I think it's possible that the commenter may be the credited Lori Friedman, but I can't be certain. When you visit the Zodiac Girls site, you're greeted to the core four characters, Scorpio, Leo, Libra, and Virgo, plus Aquarius. The remainder of the site's content lives within these side menus, beginning with Meet the Girls. As I go over these character profiles, I'm going to be assembling a relationship chart. No lines indicates an unremarkable friendship, a blue line indicates that they're mentioned to be close friends, and a red line indicates that there's tension or negativity between these characters. This chart is the closest thing to interpersonal development that any of these characters are going to get because admittedly there is not much to go on. First we have Ares. Based after the quintessential fire sign, she's depicted as being loud, brash, sociable, and competitive. She has brunette hair tied in a ponytail with her zodiac sign accessory and wears an all red outfit. Her superpower is super speed. She's mentioned as feeling protective over Cancer and Pisces and gets impatient with Sagittarius for being a know-it-all. Next, Taurus. 
Her character archetype is that she's a fashionable shopaholic and somewhat arrogant. She has wavy red hair, a green off-the-shoulder top, and black bell-bottoms. Her zodiac accessory is her belt. She has the power of super sight and is the only character depicted as needing glasses, although she doesn't wear them. Her profile mentions that her best friend is Capricorn. Something that I find interesting is that Taurus is noticeably heavier set than other characters, which is a pretty rare trait for a character from this time period. Then there's the Gemini twins who are mostly nonverbal and communicate with each other via their power telepathy. This profile is the only one written in third person. They have nearly identical appearances except for that one wears blue and has a single ponytail and the other wears pink and has twin tails. Their zodiac symbol accessory is their hair ties. These girls don't seem to have their own names, but also never appear individually. They're described as genius pranksters who use their powers and intellect for mischief. In A Brutal Roast for All Geminis, they're described as being best friends with themselves instead of any other zodiac girl. However, they are mentioned to enjoy collaborating with Aquarius. They have tension with Sagittarius because they get better grades. After that, we have Cancer, who's described as a shy, sensitive, and compassionate nature lover who secretly loves to sing. She has the ability to speak to animals and has our first animal companion, Ink the Frog. She has long black hair with a red headband, a red kerchief around her arm, a tan crop tank top with bell-bottom jeans, and a choker with her zodiac sign as the pendant. Her only mentioned character relation is that she has trouble getting along with Scorpio. Next is Leo, described as a perky and friendly extrovert who enjoys being active and outside. She has an angled bob and wears a purple and gold top with a black skirt, and her zodiac symbol is worn on a delicate silver necklace. She has the power of invisibility, which I think is an ironically funny power to give a character with this personality. It's mentioned that she loses control over this power when she gets anxious. Leo has the most stated close friends out of any of the girls so far, being close with Virgo, Taurus, and Scorpio, but with the caveat that she can be a sourpuss. Next we have Virgo, the athletic tomboy. Virgo seems to be the self-proclaimed leader of the Zodiac girls due to having the superpower most appropriate for combat, super strength. She has long bluish hair and wears a white t-shirt with her Zodiac symbol and red and purple athletic pants. Virgo doesn't have any directly mentioned close friends on her profile, but seems to have a point of tension with Taurus for always being late. Then there's Libra, the artsy and quirky one of the group. She's described as being easygoing and a fan of practical jokes and pranks. She has a blonde upturned bob and wears this witchy purple dress with green corset detailing. Like Cancer, she wears her zodiac symbol on a pendant on a choker. Her power is flight, or rather floating, and she needs to maintain concentration or she'll fall. Libra also doesn't have any specifically mentioned close friends, but has a tense relationship with Aries. She's the owner of the second animal mascot, Poe the Raven. Next is Scorpio, our resident edgelord. Her personality is blunt and honest to the point of being perceived as rude, and she continuously makes snarky comments throughout her profile description. Scorpio has a black bob with a red headband, a red sweater, and black leggings with edgy knee-high boots. Her zodiac symbol is worn on the pendant of a long necklace. She is the owner of the third animal mascot, Fred the Cat. She has the power of telekinesis and is mentioned to be close friends with Libra and Virgo. She has a point of tension with Pisces due to habitually hurting her feelings. Then there's Sagittarius, characterized as the serious and bookish girl of the group, to the point of being kind of a downer, describing movies and video games as stupid and a waste of time. She has short curly hair and wears a white tank top, baggy pants, and lace-up boots. Her zodiac symbol is worn on her scarf. Her power is described as astral projection, which in this instance describes the ability to warp through space and time. She's mentioned as being close with Aquarius and finding Libra obnoxiously unserious. Next, there's Capricorn, described as self-determined and skeptical with a passion for music and dancing. She has her long black hair in a ponytail, wears a bindi, and her outfit is a blue-tied crop top with flowy yellow-green pants. Her power is the ability to freeze time. She lists her best friends as Taurus and Cancer. After that is Aquarius, the mechanic of the group. Her personality and her superpower seem to be one and the same because she has a supernatural ability to invent things and that seems to be most of what she does. Aquarius sports a full job fit with a tied long sleeve shirt, bell bottoms, and a hippie-like headband, and she uses a funky custom power wheelchair with her zodiac symbol on the wheels. Her character profile mentioned that she feels competitive against Ares and that she'd like to eventually beat her at a race. She's the owner of the fourth animal mascot, Tut the Mouse. The final Zodiac girl, Pisces, is depicted as being shy, nervous, and sensitive. Her power, super hearing, seems the most like a disability out of any of the girl's superpowers, as nearly every mention of it focuses on how it makes her anxious or hurts her ears. Pisces has a pretty fun design with a light blue jumpsuit, shiny near high boots, long bright pink hair, and a Pisces symbol necklace. She states that she prefers to hang out with the Gemini twins due to their tendency to never speak. I went into researching this video under the impression that the Zodiac Girls were pretty solid as far as diversity and inclusion, but 
under closer scrutiny, this franchise has some issues with its characters of color utilizing very stereotypical traits. Ares is a spicy Latina stereotype whose profile states that she loves arguing and hates being told to be quiet. Gemini are mysteriously in school uniforms despite being confirmed to go to the same school as everyone else and utilizes the genius Asian stereotype. The fact that they never get to speak for themselves, or even get nicknames to set them apart, is also not great. Cancer is a Native American from no particular nation and speaks to animals a la Disney's Pocahontas. Cancer is the only one of the girls with a specifically stated ethnicity, but the thing is, just identifying your character as Native American is kind of half-assed representation. The U.S. has a lot of different Native American lineages, some which have broad cultural overlap and some that largely don't. It provides about as much useful information as stating that your character is European and expecting the audience to figure out where from their vaguely pan-European clothing. Even if a more specific cultural heritage for cancer isn't directly stated, it would be better if a region was at least visually implied. The stereotypes utilized in Zodiac Girls are more of a reflection of harmful realities than a direct contributor to them. However, when kids are looking for their own traits to be represented in media, it's disappointing to be served up with the same kind of characters every time. Relying on these stock characters is also just kind of lazy from a creative standpoint. It's clear that the Zodiac Girls was doing their best to be an inclusive and diverse brand, but the level of cultural awareness then compared to now means that most attempts at diversity from this time period are going to have aged poorly. However, these issues don't taint the brand too severely because all of them could be fixed with pretty minor tweaks, and many of these characters, notably the ones based on real people, aren't based on stereotypes. As time passes and we become more aware of certain issues, we can use the ways that the brands of the past have failed in order to do better going forward. This isn't a stereotyping issue, but I would argue that out of all the 12 Zodiac girls, Sagittarius' design seems the most like an afterthought. There's nothing about her style that communicates her character archetype. She's supposed to be the smart and serious one of the group, but her outfit communicates... I don't know... Adventurer? Sheehan model? Also, what is she doing here? And why? This design just doesn't stand up to the others in the group, and as the only black girl with textured hair, this feels like a problematic oversight. If any of these characters could use a redesign, I think it would be her. This character also notably fails the silhouette test in comparison to the other girls, because there's nothing very distinct about the shape of her hair or clothes. This silhouette is obviously Scorpio, this one is obviously Leo, this one is obviously Virgo, but Sagittarius doesn't utilize enough of these identifiable and dynamic shapes used in the stronger character designs. Clearly there's nothing wrong with this hairstyle in real life, but cartoon characters are generally expected to have a slightly more dynamic style than a highly practical real life haircut. For example, Cloud Strife wouldn't be a very identifiable character if he didn't have that Dorito sticking out of his skull. I think Sagittarius' hairstyle needs a similarly distinct shape. This is just a nitpick, but Aquarius has legs don't work syndrome instead of any real reason why she uses her wheelchair. This is more of a common oversight than a big problem, but is a bit of a pet peeve of mine as a part-time wheelchair user. She, however, wins back points for her fun custom power chair. The Zodiac Girls serve not only as flash mascots, but as a teaching tool about the Western Zodiac and the concept of astrology. If you click on a sign in the About Your Sign tab, it takes you to some positive and negative traits of each of them, plus a list of likes and dislikes. It's uncertain whether or not this list directly applies to the characters. After that is a chart giving the sign's element, gemstone, colors, and animals. I'm not sure where this information is being sourced from, because while some of it makes sense, Aries is the ram, for example, some of it seems totally off the wall. Like, Scorpio's animal is wolf? Not, you know, scorpion? These pages finish with an extremely aughts list of celebrity birthdays. Once you're educated on your sun sign, they don't teach the advanced stuff on this website. Then you can go over and check out the horoscope tab, updated weekly during the course of time in which the site was active. While the site was up, there were two compatibility checker tools, one for friendship and one for romance. Unfortunately, these tools are now dead. Great news, everyone! The Zodiac Girls has webisode! Just one webisode. It opens on Virgo reading her horoscope, which states that a calamity is possible in her future. She thinks to herself that this is a job for the Zodiac Girls and skates to go get them. She passes by Scorpio, Leo, and Libra and crashes her skateboard off screen. Scorpio rolls her eyes and thinks, let me guess, another mission? The end. The end. 
So, as you may have noticed, that was not a lot of plot. Somehow, we've managed to end the single webisode with pretty much no character interactions, narrative development, establishment of an antagonist, establishment of stakes. It really feels like they had bigger plans for these characters and we just never got to see that. There are a couple more Flash animations on this page, but none of them give us anything even like the threadbare plot that we got from the single episode. There's a music video where the characters are introduced in random order, and there's a photo shoot. Um, I guess it doesn't count as a game, but it is interactive. You tab through these pictures of the Zodiac Girls, and we get to see some outfit combinations that are exclusive to this Flash experience. Unfortunately, that's the totality of the video content we get about the Zodiac Girls. So let's carry on to the next major draw on the Fun Stuff tab, the games. By 2005, the games page had received its final update and would host a stable catalog of games until the end of the site's run. First, we have the Cosmic Design Station. In this game, you're meant to design a Zodiac Girls themed sticker or t-shirt, which you can either print out on sticker paper or onto an iron-on decal. Can I just say... This game absolutely sucks. You aren't given the option to put any of the Zodiac Girls onto the design, only the logo and a bunch of extremely generic stock graphics. And, uh, words. Very few words. I can't imagine that any kid would be motivated to put anything they made here on a t-shirt, and even less that a parent would be willing to ruin a t-shirt with this nonsense. Next is Libra's Drawing Tablet. This is a much better blank canvas game compared to the first. You can draw freehand or use coloring pages of the Zodiac Girls. This game has one glaring issue, which is the fact that there are no undo or redo buttons. This is a commitment-heavy drawing game. Next is Aquarius' Memory Lab. This is a Simon Says type game where you click to repeat the sequence of objects in Aquarius' room as they light up in order. Your memory can be guided visually or by the sequence of musical notes emitted by the objects. After you win, you get to print a certificate. After that is the Gemini Memory Match game. This is a very simple matching game with a return of those stock images from the Cosmic Design Station. If you win this game, you get to download a random JPEG. As far as I can tell, only these three are archived. Next is my personal favorite, the Style Fashion Game. This is the dress-up game, and despite its limited selection, I could play this one for hours as a kid. You pick a Zodiac girl and then start selecting clothes. Each girl has a variety of garments that are specific to them, but there are also a wide selection of general options. Many of these clothes directly allude to the dolls. My absolute favorite part is if you tab all the way to the end of the tops and bottoms, you get to see the formal wear. I would pretend to have Zodiac girls prom and spend a bunch of time putting them all in dresses. But that's it, really. It's not like I had anyone to pair them with, and they didn't interact with each other in any way meaningful enough to spark ship theories. They would all just kind of get in dresses and go to prom. That's it. Next up, Ink's Magic Fortune. This one's broken. I think I recall this being a Magic 8-Ball or Fortune Cookie Simulator. After that is Fred's Tic-Tac-Toe Game, a self-explanatory game against Scorpio's cat, Fred. Tic-Tac-Toe is just one of those games that isn't very fulfilling to play as an adult. The final game in the selection is Sagittarius's Crossword Challenge, which essentially serves as the final exam of the content of this website. Nearly all of the answers are available through context clues through the website, and even through the crossword itself, except for the previously mentioned Core 4 solution. There are a couple pieces of information here that we don't get anywhere else. First, it seems like the intended main antagonist is a Dr. Cal Amity. We never see any mention of this character outside of this crossword puzzle, except for the one tiny webisode in which Virgo's horoscope references a calamity. The non-game and video options offered on the Fun Stuff tab were mostly downloadables. There's wallpapers, icons for AIM, and some coloring pages. The Astro Greetings tab was used to send Zodiac Girls themed e-cards to friends, but is now inaccessible along with the compatibility testers. And finally, the last notable element of the main website, the Zodiac Girls had several user submission elements while the page was still actively being maintained. On the tab labeled Your Letters, there's a few options to submit content to the Zodiac Girls website. The first is just a fan mail option, of which a few are posted publicly on the Cosmically Cool Letters portion of the website. After that are two advice columns, Capricorn's Crush Advice and Taurus's Fashion Page. Page. These columns feature advice given in character from Capricorn and Taurus. Taurus's fashion page stopped receiving updates starting April 2008, and Capricorn's crush advice survived a little longer, wrapping up 2009 after a period of sparse updates. The final page, Pisces Poetry Corner, passed away along with the fashion page, ceasing updates in April 2008. On this page, users could submit poetry, and apparently they had a problem with plagiarized works because this issue is mentioned here and several times on the forums. This is a trove of some quality preteen deep thoughts.
Something that entirely escaped my notice while I was actively a fan of the Zodiac Girls was the existence of its own designated forum page. A lot of older forum sites are largely lost due to tons of individual links being generated, but there's more archived than I expected here, enough to get a good handle on the site's content. I first very eagerly clicked on the Zodiac Girls fanfiction tab because I just had to know what kind of content was being churned out about these girls, and, well, I'm afraid I was disappointed. The forum was definitely intended to host Zodiac Girls fanfiction, but it had definitely been thoroughly appropriated into a roleplay games forum. I couldn't even find a single instance of a saved thread starring the Zodiac Girls, and while I'm sure there were some in there, this was clearly not the main draw of this forum. The other subtopics in the Cosmic Club include the Zodiac Girls discussion page, which is also extremely underpopulated, probably due to there not being enough canon content for kids to be able to latch onto these characters and theorize about them. There's an astrology discussion board, a board for zines and newsletters, a poetry board, and a school board, which seems like it ought to be sorted into the following category, Girl Zone, since it's a lifestyle topic and not directly related to the Zodiac Girls. The topics that were actually in the girl zone were the crush corner, friendship place, hobby room, self-confidence is your number one fashion accessory, around the world, health nut, and make a difference. After that is the entertainment subcategory with the media forums listening, watching, and reading. There's a board for video games, and finally Gemini's chatter room. Now that I think of it, I may have gone on this forum exactly once, because I recall there being a Zodiac Girls equivalent of the Gaia Online Chatterbox forum. After that are just some forum utilities, a suggestions box, and a help center. I was surprised at how many individual threads are archived. I assumed that the majority of this was going to be lost. It seemed like a solid half of the pages I clicked had at least one archival capture. This is a pretty boring and typical tween girl forum, so I don't have anything like a bizarre subculture to explore, but I'll leave a link to the Wayback Machine page in the description if you're nostalgic for the Cosmic Club. The Zodiac Girls has a Zazzle store. That's right, present tense, nobody's bothered to shut it down yet. You can still go and buy stickers and random items of all these girls. Thank you, Zazzle, for accidentally preserving all these relics of the 2000s. On November 14th, 2005, an announcement for the Zodiac Girls dolls appeared on the website, therefore evolving the Zodiac Girls from Flash mascots to a doll line. The dolls were $17.99 per individual, or $215.88 for all 12 plus a second Gemini. This would be $25 USD for an individual, or $300 USD for the bundle adjusted for inflation. Tragically, the announcement image and most of the images on the archived online store are broken. Let's take to the web to figure out what these dolls look like. I immediately noticed an aesthetic similarity to Bratz in these dolls, which is further highlighted by an actual Bratz doll being mistakenly included in a lot of Zodiac Girls. What I do not immediately notice is an overwhelming resemblance to the Flash characters. I recall being kind of repulsed by the ads for these dolls on the website, and I think a betrayal of expectations is the biggest motivating factor for that. Let's go in order again. First, we have Ares wearing a red tracksuit and coming with a variety of sports and running themed accessories. This appears to be a pretty high-quality doll with well-crafted clothes and small items. They come with a clear stand to keep the doll upright. I think Ares' standard outfit looks really nice. Unlike Taurus. While I feel like Ares is a decent adaptation of the Flash character, this Taurus looks so hilariously unglamorous that she looks like she's meant to be working in a lab. This silky green shirt is just a horrible look on this doll, especially in comparison to her adorable off-the-shoulder sweater that she usually wears. Next are the Gemini twins, who are sold as an individual doll. She's given both pink and blue clothes and has her hair down, therefore eliminating one of their points of difference. If you wanted a complete collection, you would need to buy two of Gemini. Next is Cancer, who's shown here in two iterations. One more like her default flash outfit, and then this very adorable outfit with braided hair. Both of these versions of the dolls come with her pet frog ink and a microphone. Then we have Leo, whose outfit is cheerleader themed. She wears a black sweater vest with a Z, and then a white and pink skirt and dress shirt, plus a fluffy white beret. There's a photo with an alternate outfit, and I'm not sure if this one is specifically meant for Leo, but it shows that her hair on this doll is much longer than the Flash character. Next up is Virgo, whose electric blue hair is a notable change from the Flash character's possibly stylized black hair. Her standard doll is wearing her Flash outfit plus a down vest, and comes with a skateboard and baseball cap. Then we have Libra, seen here in an adaptation of her witchy purple dress. Her accessories are themed around art making. Libra is the only one of the dolls I've seen so far that doesn't really strike me as a teen fashion doll. At a glance, I think she appears to be much younger than the others. 
Considering her relatively more mature style in the Flash games, I think this doll is a bit disappointing. As a kid in tween, I wanted to roleplay as people older than me, not a boring fellow child. I don't know what it is about the Libra doll design that makes her look so much younger than the others, and it kind of bugs me. Next is Scorpio, who I think is the strongest example of a character design adaptation that we get from these dolls. Her color palette is strong and identifiable, the outfit is cute, and the brushable hair is visually similar enough to the graphic angles of the Flash version. It's just a good design. This second version, which I think might be the original release, I think is much weaker. This outfit isn't nearly as interesting, and I'm not sure why they package her hair like that. After that is Sagittarius, who's wearing a cuter outfit than she ever gets in the Flash games, but they gave up on trying to give her short textured hair, trying to cheat it with a ponytail. In my opinion, Flash Sagittarius's hairstyle is pretty incompatible with a mass market brushable hair doll. It becomes really hard to disguise the roots when the hair becomes too short. This is why Bratz men all look so nasty. When you don't have the level of time and effort that a one-of-a-kind doll customizer has to make it look good, then it just doesn't work out. Really short styles like this are more optimized for a sculpted hair doll. I think a style with a more dynamic shape like puffs or braids or even just a longer afro would translate much more easily into a soft haired doll. I find it disappointing that Doll Sagittarius' hair isn't even a little curly. Next, Capricorn. I was right in assuming that Capricorn would be another easily adaptable design. Her hair and features combined into a pretty recognizable version of the original character. She wears a puffy blue top and denim bell bottoms and a scarf around her waist. No notes from me here. Solid doll. Then there's Aquarius, interestingly packaged in a standing position with her wheelchair off to the side. She's not confirmed or disconfirmed to be ambulatory without it. But I guess it's safe to assume that Doll Aquarius is a part-timer. This is actually kind of supported in her flash design as well, because her thighs appear muscular in a way that implies that she can exercise with her legs. Again, this is probably just an oversight rather than anything intentional. I think Aquarius's wheelchair is one of the most fun doll wheelchairs I've ever seen. Finally, we have Pisces, who's demonstrating the principle of why it's just not a great idea to give a brushable hair doll straight fringe bangs. Again, soft hair dolls have a hard time with short hair, even if that's just a portion of the style. Pisces Flash design has the most bizarre outfit out of any of the Zodiac girls, and so it's no surprise that it was changed into something a bit more casual for the doll. She also has an alternate outfit with a more academic look and her hair pulled back. If that doll still has bangs, then you really can't do anything to her hair or else it will be effed beyond belief. So that's all the dolls. I think as far as doll lines go, the Zodiac girls were only ever okay. I think the style of doll is only optimized for some of the girls, and of those girls, only a few of them were done justice. However, when the Zodiac Girls dolls were cute, they were pretty damn cute. Aries, Gemini, Cancer, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Aquarius, I think are all pretty solid, and I'd be happy to own any one of them. But I find the others mostly just... okay. Not remarkable, but not offensively bad either. Here's something that I was surprised and horrified to find out in my research. In 2006, they were attempting to develop a TV show for the Zodiac Girls. Maybe right now you're like, Wow, Lee, that sounds incredible. Why would that be horrifying? Well, it's because they decided to attach John Crickfalusi to this project as character designer. That's right, traitor of our collective childhoods and renowned predator, John K. Can I just say, thank f***ing God that this was an aborted project. The fact that he was making cartoons for kids was bad enough, let alone specifically for little girls. Also, these designs are dog sh in comparison to the originals. They're all fucking curvy. They all have adult party cartoon fan service bodies because this goddamn pervert can't come up with any of their body type. And with skin tight bodysuits, look at the dumbass face Virgo was making. And look what he did to Libra. He confiscated all of her personality. I hate this and I want to shove John K in a locker so hard that he gets a fucking concussion. I had some wine about it and it made me less mad. I know for certain that I wouldn't be that upset about these character designs if they were made by literally anyone else, but the knowledge of who he is and what he did irrevocably sours my perception of these. There is apparently a lore bible written up for this show, but this is now lost media and is only referenced in the archive of writer Erica Strobel's portfolio website. Besides that page, one of the few allusions to the show on the web is this article on the interest in Zodiac Girls by Teletoon. This show was intended to be called The Zodiacs, and would use the website's narrative of the girls being superheroes who band together to perform missions. However, it seems like in this adaptation there's some kind of alien species or solar superheroes who are only posing as normal teenagers instead of the implied website canon of being normal teens who happen to have superpowers. 
The end of this article mentions the intended main antagonist of this series, Percival, the villainous 13th Zodiac member who's apparently seeking revenge for a thousand years of neglect. Like Dr. Cal Amity, if there's any official art of this character, it was never publicized. Beyond the unfortunate figure attached to this project, I th think it's probably just for the best that this show didn't get made. I think that the execs could sense that this was a nothing burger concept for 11 to 22 minute episodes, and so the project was called. Effective Flash mascots do not necessarily translate into effective TV show characters, and instead of this show, I think we should have got more and longer webisodes. These characters and their minimal and simple narrative style are optimized for this kind of short form media. Considering that the website's Flash content stopped being updated in 2005 and the article about the show pitch was released in 2006, I think possibly either due to a copyright transfer or due to the site owners becoming demoralized, this show's halted production may have been the beginning of the end for Zodiac Girls. At this point, the website had reached its final form, and the user-submitted content began to dry up. Updates to the Zodiac Girls website began to slow at the beginning of 2007, with new updates no longer being posted monthly to the homepage. The news page remained stagnant for over a year, until April 2008. The website's death knell was in the form of the newly remodeled Zazzle store, therefore marking the end of the Zodiac Girls e-boutique. The girls were dolls no longer, and relegated again to the status of Flash mascots. In October 2011, the forums displayed a message that read, They're down for a little maintenance, but we'll be back up soon. Unfortunately, the forums would be down for a little maintenance for the rest of time. The horoscopes continued being updated weekly, becoming progressively shorter, more vague, and lower and lower effort, until eventually stopping entirely after the week of June 9, 2013. The only two archived horoscopes from this final week belong to Capricorn and Virgo. As you can see at this point, the fashion advice has been replaced with a word of the day sort of thing, but the fashion label remains. I'm curious if at this point the horoscopes weren't being written by a person, but with an early kind of sentence generator. They're simple to the point of being nonsensical, and they could easily just be sourced from a bank of Barnum statements. However, it's equally likely that whoever was in charge of writing these just didn't care anymore. At this point, after the final set of horoscopes, the Zodiac Girls brand was as good as gone. It's not certain when the website stopped being hosted, but the Wayback Machine's captures of the website became more and more sporadic after that final What's New page in 2008, and very few of the site's pages have any archival data from after 2013. If I'm honest, the main thing that comes to mind when I think of the Zodiac Girls is squandered potential. It's kind of mind-boggling that this website was actively updated for so many years, and yet the Flash content, its main draw at least from my perspective, was never developed beyond a few years from its initial release. I doubt that the Zodiac Girls was ever a high profit margin venture. Making more Flash content was probably deemed not worth the price and effort of outsourcing Flash programmers, and so what we had from around the very beginning was all that we ever got. But like, why lie about it? Misleading or dishonest messaging seems to be a theme throughout the entire Zodiac Girls web presence. They promised more webisodes, and they never came. They promised that they'd publish more user-submitted letters, and that never happened. They promised a narrative, and we never got it. They promised that the forums would be back after a period of maintenance, and they never were. These white lies in isolation may protect your brand from its audience losing faith, but even as a kid, you can really feel these dishonesties add up. After the third or fourth time it happens, you stop believing that they're ever going to deliver on their promises. And in this case, they never did. I think there might be something that just doesn't work about trying to turn the Zodiac into a line of characters. I mean, I mean, ones that are actually directly supposed to represent those Zodiac signs and not just vaguely allude to them. As soon as you start developing these characters beyond the absolute bare minimum, you start alienating would-be purchasers of these dolls. It's no problem to just buy your own Zodiac sign doll when they have no real character traits, but if they're developed to the point that you find them unrelatable, maybe you're not so tempted to make a purchase anymore. And then that hypothetical character development poses a problem with a broader collection of dolls. Assuming you don't have the means to buy all 12 plus a second Gemini, you're probably getting only one. And that means you're probably getting your corresponding Zodiac doll. When these doll characters have more distinct personalities, the audience becomes confused. Do you buy your own Zodiac doll, or do you buy your favorite character? It's ingrained in Western audiences that it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy a Zodiac item that doesn't correspond to your own star sign, and this subconsciously discourages your audience from making a purchase. 
Therefore, you're stuck in this permanent limbo of making the doll's personality less enough to be marketable, while also teasing this potential greater and more specific story to keep audiences coming back. One that will ultimately never exist. How would I have fixed this? Well, I'm sorry Zodiac Girls doll fans, but I think turning these characters into a doll line was a non-starter. I think the brand could have had greater longevity if they had instead focused on these characters as Flash mascots, or even graphic merchandise mascots a la Hello Kitty or Emily the Strange. I think their Flash style was leaps and bounds stronger than the bootleg brat style of the dolls, and I also don't think that the dolls were a very faithful recreation of these characters in the first place. I would not be able to identify Doll Virgo as the same character as Flash Virgo out of context. Lots of their identifiable details get lost, like Taurus being curvier than the other girls, or the way that they all have distinct head shapes, or the highly distinct silhouettes of these characters. They just don't translate very well into a brat style fashion doll. If they were to go for the doll angle, I think that maybe the dolls that they chose weren't the way to go. I think these characters would be served better by staying more true to the original Flash designs. First, brushable hair just doesn't work for too many of these character designs, and so I think something sculpted would probably be a stronger design choice than trying to convince these floppy polyester strands to hold an identifiable silhouette. 2000's Polly Pocket probably would have been a better design to adapt from than Bratz. I think smaller figures with sculpted hair and irresistibly chewy clothes would serve the Flash versions of these characters really well. Like Polly, you could have brushable hair on figures that are more suited to that, and sculpted hair on the rest. Another option that I think would have been better than the dolls we got are Milky Way and the Galaxy Girl style plush dolls. The Flash style translates extremely easily with this type of doll. This doll style is also much more able to simulate textured hair in a variety of ways. However, this form has the drawback of not being very well optimized as a fashion doll. Honestly though, I think in a world where the Zodiac Girls became a huge phenomenon, I think they would have really chose to lean into that Hello Kitty angle. These are solid character designs, maybe a bit dated from today's standards, but from the perspective of a kid in 2006, they were exceptional. I think if these girls showed up in stores with t-shirts, pencil pouches, and journals with pithy Zodiac themed sayings, I think that they could have become a sensation, even without doing that much else to the website. But oh, the website. It may have not been the most profitable part of the Zodiac Girls IP, but it was my most cherished and fondly remembered. In all, I think the Zodiac Girls was a good kids IP, with the potential to be a great one, but missteps and fumbles along the way led it to never achieve the potential that it may have had. The Zodiac Girls was a brand with an identity crisis, when all along it probably should have just been a cool website with cool characters. And that's all I have about the Zodiac Girls. Did you play this website back in the day? Do you think these characters could be successfully revived in our current decade? Let me know with a comment. I was going to do a Patreon companion to this video, but instead I got in a car accident. Sorry. Finally, I would like to give a special shout out to my Ultra Lee VIPs, Ms. Goat and Riley Meyer. And finally, thank you Fishcatch. Thank you both so much, and I think next time I'm going to be back with that big ol' video about Disney's virtual worlds. Okay.